Hey everyone, it's a new season and we're gonna start talking about our first money making or what you can do early on in the season to make some decent profit. Over the first few days of the season, I ended up doing a 24 hour stream and I wanted to try again mage blood. And after doing this strategy for about 10 hours or so on day two, we ended up making quite a lot of money and saw that this is pretty competitive with what is available this season. So we're gonna make our guide on it. This season, a lot of early money makers seem a bit lackluster and seem not very profitable early game mapping it just seems a bit down especially with all the nerfs to how many items that you found on the grounds and how many items rare drops that money income for a lot of people seems to be kind of low and a lot of the monsters seem pretty difficult so because of that we decide to do some essences and essences are very competitive especially early game because a lot of people want to use them for crafting there's a lot of very desirable essence modifiers and the other popular way of making early game items harvest has been significantly nerfed in comparison to what it was the last few seasons that's making this the most reliable crafting method so let's talk about the setup for this and the passive tree that we want to use so here is a sample of what you would want your tree to look like mine looks a bit different than this since i was using mine to progress through maps early on as well but this gets the gist of everything you'll need the most important thing is we need to pick up all the essence nodes and this doesn't really become good without these two at the top crystal resonance and amplified energies these allow you to see shrieking essences on your monsters and then this allows you to get two essence monsters if one of the essences is a shrieking essence which is very important on top of that we are blocking every single piece of content the reason behind this is the way we're going to be running this is we're going to be running tier one maps and in tier one maps almost anything isn't really worth touching as well as for everything we block we get two percent chance to get extra contents and essences do count as extra content on top of that since we're not putting anything special on our maps we want to run stream of consciousness to have 50 percent more base chance for extra content what this does is on average we're going to see an additional one to two free essences and we can very consistently see up to five essences on a single map which is very good the more essences we get the more money we make per map i also opted to take shrines this is just because we are going to be speed running through these maps as fast as possible so having a guaranteed shrine as well as double shrine effects is going to give us a chance of seeing the movement speed train quite a lot and that will basically double the speed at which you run the map at as well as getting some other shrine chances you can ideally see two to three shrines per map and you'll see at least one because we have supplication which gives us a guaranteed one the atlas tree isn't very the atlas tree to set this up isn't very difficult to put together we're opting to also pick up both of the sides on this just because we want to have more chances at getting essences we also need the right side for remnants of corruption and with these two nodes we should be able to self-sustain our own remnants of corruption you really need every single essence node to make this work if you have a tree that's deviating from this a bit too much at minimum you need the top ones but not having the two bottom nodes as well will really cut into your profits as for the maps that we're going to be running this is going to be very very simplistic all we're doing is we are just picking up random maps with a good layout for me i personally am running strands but in the description below i will put a list of decent maps that you can look for the goal of this is we want to do low tier maps essences do not scale with map tier what that means is a tier one essence monster will have the same amount of essences at the same rarity as a tier 16 monster but at the same time since we're running a tier one map the essence monster will be substantially easier to defeat compared to a tier 16 monster that's not saying all of them will be super Super easy some of these have been ridiculously difficult and it's just look at the draw of what essences they have plus what arch nemesis monsters they get but in 95 percent of cases these essence monsters die in two seconds and it's very simple to just go and kill them get our essences and move on we are also not going to be alking or transmuting our maps because there's no reason to quantity doesn't do anything for the essences that we find it's simply just going to make the essence monsters harder there is no reason to do anything so your setup is simply just as simple as getting your map maps and then just running them in the map device we are going to put our map in and run essence this is going to give us two extra essence for 2c this is more than worth it every single essence on average is going to give you at least like five chaos sometimes you get unlucky and you might have like a one or two chaos essence but you're going to make around five chaos per essence no matter what so there's no reason to not put this on our map and all we do is we just simply activate run through find all the essences kill them and move on we don't even need to stop and kill the boss as a tier one boss it's not going to give us any loot on some of these maps sometimes an essence can spawn inside the boss room so you might have to go check 
for that and check it on a map by map basis for example in strand an essence cannot spawn in the boss room so we never have to worry about even checking in there so while running your maps and killing essences there is something you can do to increase the profitability of all this there's a special essence called the remnant of corruption and what this does is it corrupts the essences on a monster before you free them this has a variety of effects such as potentially changing what essences there are in the monster adding a completely new random essence to the monster upgrading the tier of all of our essences giving us special essences that are only available through remnants of corruption or potentially doing nothing on average clicking this on every single essence monster is going to give you a profit but that's going to make you go through them very quickly and that is not sustainable with just the two nodes on the tree that we picked up for a 20 percent chance for something to spawn with the remnant of corruption we can very easily sustain our own and actually make a surplus that we can then sell later to other people by just following a few simple rules we are only going to remnant of corruption under very specific circumstances such as corrupting monsters that have any of the purple essences which are scorn and be misery and dread what this does is it sometimes will corrupt those essences and turn them into special essences that can only be gained like this those essences are worth quite a lot of money depending on how popular they are but there's two that really stand out which are horror and delirium horror are needed for rf players to make a eight link helmet and are going to always be in high demand these are only going to go up over the first week of the season as more and more people start crafting their helmets they are currently worth about 15 chaos but these are going to easily hit 30 chaos each the other one is delirium these are used in some cases as well and they're kind of popular and then the other two essences insanity and hysteria are more meta derived and sometimes might not really be worth much as well but if you get a horror you're really happy especially if the monster also has a shrieking on it which doubles the horrors to two other cases for corrupting are mostly based on the current economy currently because of what builds are popular deafening essences of wrath and deafening essences of loathing are worth quite a lot of money because of this, if we ever see a screaming or shrieking, loathing or wrath, you also want to upgrade with a remnant of corruption for the chance of getting a higher tier one. Deafening wrath is worth around 11 chaos and deafening loathing is worth around seven. So if we can turn a shrieking into a deafening of those two, we can make a substantial amount of money. The last candidates is greed. If you see shrieking greed, those are usually worth upgrading as deafening greeds are worth around six to seven chaos each. They're the life essence and they're used by practically everyone and those are in high demand and basically sell as soon as you put them up the last use case for using a remnant of corruption is if you just have a big stack of essences so for example i personally only do it if i see three or four essences or more on the monster but if there's a large amount of essences you should just always remnants because the outcome of whatever happens is usually more profitable there will also be this exact list if you'd like a tldr version of it in the description as well so i'd recommend looking at that and maybe saving it yourself to look over for your first few maps just to remember it but eventually it becomes pretty intuitive and you don't really have to think too much about it so now that we've ran our maps and now that we have a bunch of different essences what exactly are we going to do with them well in most cases most people want to buy the second to last row of essences shrieking so what we're going to do in our essence tab is we're going to click upgrade and we're going to upgrade every single tier of the lower essences as we sometimes get those all the way up to shrieking you do not want to accidentally click on your shrieking essence and upgrade them to deafening as in most cases you are actually losing money and in most cases most people don't actually want the deafening so it'd be kind of hard to sell them as deafening there are a few exceptions to this on where you do want to upgrade to deafening the two being deafening essence of wrath and deafening essence of loathing you're always going to upgrade all of your shriekings into them and sell them as deafening as people only want to craft at those the reason behind this is wrath gives us a lightning damage roll and if people are crafting their weapons they're going to want the best version of this roll and loathing gives us mana reservation efficiency and if people are going to craft with this on their helmets they're going to want the best roll for there as well the last thing we need to really talk about is once you've upgraded your essences how are you going to sell them well for me i like to sell them in stacks of nine i simply sell them out of my essence tab set to public with each item individually priced all i do is i look at the shrieking essence and i use awakened poe trade and check for the price of them so for example reads are worth about three chaos now i don't want to sell them in the stacks of one because for example here what if someone only wants to buy four of them or if someone wants to buy three of them that's going to be annoying having to do a lot of trades especially with how many different essences you're going to have so what i prefer to do is i just sell them in stacks of nine so for example if greed is three chaos each when
what I'm going to do for my price is I'm actually going to put 27 divided by nine. What this means is how much chaos you want or how much whatever you're selling it in or how many of those you're going to give. So in this case, I want 27 chaos for nine essences. And then on the trade websites, whatever I gain nine of these essences, they're going to be put up. But since I only have seven, these won't actually be listed on the trade website. That way, if someone wants to buy from me, they can only buy in stacks of nine. So I'll only have to do one trade for 27 chaos rather than potentially two or three or more trades at once. Another really convenient thing is I only sell if I have a multiple of nine. So for example, this stack of scorn, I would sell them because if I take this stack out, I will still have one left over and that's going to keep the price. That means I don't have to consistently re-update the price on them. If I were to, for example, sell a whole stack, then the price will go away. And if I get more essences, I will have to reprice them again at whatever I want them to be which is kind of annoying. It might take a bit to get used to this, to not fully sell everything if you have an exact multiple of nine, but it really helps make this easier since you're going to be doing a lot of essences. You're going to be selling a lot of them individually, and it's going to be a bit of a pain in the ass consistently having to redo your prices. So you can also try to sell these essences on TFT, but in my opinion, I found that trying to sell it on there this early into season is a bit difficult as people don't really want to buy bulk essences to turn a profit. Most people just want to simply buy a specific essence that they need for their craft so it should be substantially easier to just sell them in stacks of nine the last thing we should talk about is how profitable this is a big portion of this is simply how many people are doing this method essences are always going to be in high demand especially this early in the season especially with harvest not being very good but if essences flood the market sometimes the prices can go so far down and outstrip the demands that the profitability can go down but in most cases this is pretty consistent and Typically, it only goes up over the first week of the season as more and more people start crafting. I did a 24 hour stream at the start and we did this method for about 10 hours or so. At the start, I was making around five to six divines per hour as I was really the only person supplying essences. But as more and more people watched, as more and more people started doing it, the prices of essences did fall. But it seems like everything has stabilized around three to four divines an hour right now, which I think is very, very good. In my 10 hours of doing this, I started off with only having one divine and we ended the night with 12 divine orbs two mirror shards and a house of mirrors i decided to put my divines into mirror related items as they only generate more value over time so it's just a way to passively invest but overall our average money per hour was somewhere around three to four depending on prices as they fluctuated and even this morning when i'm doing this again it seems like that is pretty much the consistent amount of money that you can make which i think for a first few days of the season method that will work into week one and week two that is a very good amount of money that you're making given that you're simply just running white tier one maps where you are simply just killing the essences right this method is so simple but it's making so much money which i think is great that's about it if you have any questions feel free to write them in the comments. I will be happy to answer them. I'm also going to be running this strategy myself on stream. So if you'd like to see it for yourself or ask some questions, feel free to come by as well. Other than that, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you in our next Moneymaker.